The anime begins, when mankind was met with a gigantic floating fortress appearing out of nowhere in the sky, a never-ending war ensued between humans and the invading monsters. But 13 years after the initial invasion, the government comes up with a more civilized way to deal with the invaders, a battle in a football arena every week to make money off of the people in the country. The Power Rangers, also called the Dragon Keepers, who are the guys who defeated the invaders, are the biggest celebrities on the planet. Before their match this week against the monster, their leader the Red Keeper, greets the audience and gives many of them his autographs. In these crazy times where the general public is manipulated by the government to believe that humanity's fate depends on these Power Rangers who battle against the invaders every Sunday at the football field, a mysterious young man gets an opportunity to join the Ranger Force. He gets persuaded by a blonde female recruiter to join the recruitment program, so he looks up at the Flying Fortress, wondering what decision he should make. At the same time, the Flying Fortress releases a tiger boss monster named Ultra Tiger in the stadium along with its minions, who immediately cause an uproar in the surrounding area. As the crowd at the stadium gets excited to teach the monsters, who keep coming every week a lesson, they begin throwing cans and trash at the monsters telling them to leave their planet. The Red Keeper enters the arena, posing as the strongest hero. He uses big lines and heavy dialogue, telling the Ultra Tiger that he won't let the monsters have their way on his dear planet. More Power Rangers arrive alongside the Red Keeper, and as the five of them strike a pose, the spectators begin cheering for them. Ultra Tiger claims to be a monster born from the rage of many tigers and states that if he wins today, he will turn all humans into tigers to send this world into absolute chaos. His threats scare the crowd, who could only look at humanity's last hope for the Power Ranger team to save them. The fight ensues, with the minions trying to attack the spectators instead of the Power Rangers, but before they can harm them, the blonde woman Suzukiri from before kicks the minions away, telling the others that she will take charge of dealing with the minions. The boss monster fills his fists with immense powers and smashes them onto the ground, causing a big shockwave that sends the Power Rangers flying away. As the leader of their team, the Red Keeper realizes how strong the Ultra Tiger is, he comments loudly that this will be their toughest fight up until now. The Green Ranger, who specializes in strength, picks up a boulder and throws it at the Ultra Tiger, crashing him into a pulp instantly. However, their battle doesn't end as the monster gathers energy once again and breaks apart the boulder above it, making the spectators gasp in fear. Calling himself immortal, the Ultra Tiger releases an energy wave and transforms into his most destructive and final form, a semi-truck. Which to be honest has caught me totally off guard, but whatever. The semi-truck boss monster hits all five members of the Power Rangers squad and returns to his original form, roaring in excitement as he has claimed his victory, but the fight continues as the Dragon Keepers get up on their feet again because of the power of anime and friendship. The Red Keeper makes a motivational statement saying that he will continue fighting as long as there is someone left to protect, and becomes an inspirational figure instantly with his speech. Preparing to use their ultimate move as divine crafters, the Red Keeper strikes another pose, prompting the minions to protect their boss, the Ultra Tiger. The minions discuss what they should do after the Dragon Keepers make their final move and decide to go flying back to the fortress, revealing that the entire fight is a total fake. The boss monster, who is also definitely just pretending to be evil, whispers to one of the minions telling him that he has forgotten his losing speech. One of the minions named Foot Soldier D who is sick of putting up with this act walks towards the Power Rangers ignoring their ultimate move as he has decided to expose everything today. An hour earlier, before the fight, the minions at the fortress were in grave trouble as they weren't able to come up with a monster for this week's battle. They reveal that it's their task to come up with new ideas every single week, but because it's not easy to come up with unique monsters for 13 long years, they decide to make a semi-truck tiger, at least it's somewhat original. One of them wonders why they have continued this act for 13 long years, revealing that they lost the war during the very first year when they came to Earth 13 years ago. After the floating fortress fell in just a year, the minions' bosses were also wiped out along with a fortress, with the mere minions called the Dusters only left in the fortress. The Power Rangers decided not to kill them as they wished to make use of them. With no more than 30 minutes left, one of the minions quickly draws a normal-looking monster on the whiteboard, but it gets rejected immediately as they need to make something that will leave a lasting impression on the audience. A female minion draws a cute cat monster stating that it would definitely baffle the crowd as they wouldn't want the monster to die at their hero's hands. However, making the people of Earth fall in love with monsters is not their goal, so that idea also gets rejected. The Foot Soldier D, 
who questions why they need to even come up with something unique when all they are doing is losing to humans every single week, hoping to win one day against the humans. Foot Soldier D motivates everyone to create a monster that will not lose against the Ranger Keepers. He reminds them of their original goal, which is world dominance and encourages them to come up with a strategy again that will help them make Earth theirs. However, every one of the minions called D a fool for even thinking that there was a chance of winning, and after laughing at him in unison, they beat him up, putting him back in his place. Foot Soldier F comes to D to calm him down and tells him that there's no point in fighting amongst themselves. F admits that he himself is mad because they have already fought the Rangers over 1,000 times in the past 13 years, but because most of them are now satisfied with what they have left and the fact that they aren't dead, they don't want to go against the Rangers. F explains that they still continue to invade the planet every Sunday as an act because that is the condition they made for the truce. Apparently the government is making tons of money and revenue using their battle, and that is why they are faking everything in front of the general public. Still, D doesn't accept the fact that he will have to fake being a loser for the rest of his life and gets determined to expose the Rangers act. In the meantime, the chubbiest minion amongst them gets chosen to act as the boss tiger this time, who uses his transformation power to turn into a fake boss. F who is still with D asks him to be the boss monster, as he is way better than the chubby guy at transformation magic, but D doesn't want to, claiming he is busy and also doesn't want to be the boss if he is meant to be defeated. Understanding his reasons, Foot Soldier F moves on and tells him about a strange incident he encountered during the last week of battle. Apparently, when he was fighting against the Power Rangers, a kid in the stands cheered for him and told him to do his best, which made him wonder why an enemy would take his side. Although it made no sense to him, F felt good that the kid did so. In fact, it has motivated him to do his best from now on, just for the sake of the audience who are eager every week for their fight. But still, D remains determined, and that is why at present he stops faking the act and decides to expose the rangers in front of the entire world. As the Red Keeper uses his ultimate power and blasts all of the minions, causing a giant explosion, the announcer claims the humans' victory once again, encouraging the crowd to cheer for the Dragon Keepers. However, when the dust settles D comes out revealing himself to be an immortal being who has immense regenerative powers, which explains how the minions stay alive and in one piece after being defeated every week. D tells the rangers that just because they have lost the war, it doesn't give the humans the rights to do whatever they want, stating that monsters aren't meant to just take a beating. He asks everyone how they are still entertained after 13 years of the same act repeating over and over, offering them something new, D decides to make a change for the first time. The rangers don't understand why this minion hasn't escaped back to the fortress, even though it was supposed to have happened according to their contract with them. The pink ranger tells D to return to the fortress, but he doesn't listen to her and tells everyone that it is about time that they stop playing these raid games. Clenching his fist, D launches himself towards the ranger, offering them a real fight, but unfortunately he is nothing more than a weakling, so the red ranger steps up to deal with him. The crowd gets excited seeing that finally one of the monsters is courageous enough to fight back, and begins to cheer for D, telling him that he can do it. D overhears their chance and stops for a moment as he sees that a little boy is cheering for him instead of the heroes of his planet, which makes him think that the kid is only looking down on him for being weak. Wanting desperately to teach the human race a lesson, D attacks Red Keeper. However, the Red Keeper is so strong that he takes D out in one punch, telling him to lose as he is supposed to and reminding him about their contract. As he slices off D into equal halves using his flashy sword, the others fire another cannon blast at him to end their battle. As D is reduced to nothing, the other minions back at the fortress wonder when he will be returning. They assume that he won't be returning as many minions like him have also run off, unable to stand this act any longer. That seems to be the case as the dust particles of D wind up somewhere away from the stadium and regenerate his body there. D admits to knowing that he is not strong enough to be a villain, but because he doesn't want his comrades to be humans as slaves, he gets sick of everything and turns into his fake human form to find a solution to this problem. Suzukiri coincidentally comes there, and upon seeing D in his human form, she recognizes him as the guy who earlier today wanted to be recruited as a dragon keeper. She asks him what he is doing here, and in response D claims that he only came here to have a better view of the battlefield. She asks him whether he liked how the dragon keepers were in the battle and whether he liked them. D replies honestly, telling her that he is envious of them as he wants to be as strong as they are. This makes Suzukiri assume that D seriously wishes to join the Dragon Keeper, so she offers him to take the recruitment exam. 
As this is the perfect opportunity to infiltrate the Power Ranger squad, D happily takes that offer and becomes all fired up to defeat all of his enemies. That brings the episode to an end. Thanks for watching. Want next part subscribe the channel and turn on notification bell.